हेलो एवरीवन, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट वेलकम बैक टू अ चैनल अगला सेम स्कूल्स। टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी कवरिंग चैप्टर वन ऑफ क्लास टेन सोशल इकोनॉमिक्स दैट इज डेवलपमेंट सो हेयर लेट्स डिस्कस क्वेश्चन इन आंसर्स। क्वेश्चन नंबर वन से डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ कंट्री कैन जनरली बी डिटरमाइंड बाय फर्स्ट इट्स पर कैपिटल इनकम सेकेंड its average literacy level third health status of its people and fourth is all of these so answer is fourth that is all of these for the question number 2 says which of the following neighboring countries has better performed in terms of human development than india answer is first bangladesh second sri lanka third nepal and the fourth is pakistan so answer is second that is sri lanka for the third question says assume there are four families in a country the average per capita income of these families is rupees 5000 and if the income of three families is rupees 4000 rupees 7000 and rupees 3000 respectively what is the income of the fourth family answer is rupees 6000 Now question number 4 says what is the main criteria used by the world bank in classifying different countries what are the limitations of this criteria if any answer is first that is in the world development report of 2006 the world bank has used the criteria of the average income or per capita income in classifying different countries second the average income or a per capita income is the total income of the country divided by its population for the second point is according to wdr of 2006 countries are classified as first rich country that is countries with per capita income of rupees 4 lakh 53000 per annum and above in 2004 are called rich countries whereas second is low income countries Here, countries with per capita income of rupees thirty-seven thousand or less are called low-income countries. Third, India comes in the category of low-income countries because its per capita income in two thousand four was just rupees twenty-eight thousand per annum. For the next is rich countries. It include countries of a Middle East and certain other small countries are generally called developed countries. for the third is limitation of criteria are first it does not tell us how this income is distributed among people a country may have more equitable distribution people may be neither very rich nor extremely poor second in other country with the same average income one person may be extremely rich while other may be very poor so the method of average income does not give the correct picture of a country and the third point is this system hides disparities among people now question number 5 says in what respects is the criteria used by the undp for measuring development different from the one used by the world bank answer is first that is the criteria used by world bank is the average income that is per capita income is the main criteria used by world bank in classifying different countries and the second is the undp compares countries based on hdi that is on the educational level of the people their health status and the per capita income or we can say the average income third point is the human development index used by undp is better because it is a wider indicator in which besides per capita income health and education are also included now question number 6 says why do we use averages are there any limitations to the use illustrate with your own example related to the development answer is we use averages for comparison between two countries two person or any two or more things second the limitations are first average do not tell us about similarities or differences between two countries or person or a thing second point is 
by average only one aspects item that is size etc in case of a country marks or participation in sports activities etc and in case of students we can compare all aspects or achievements are not compared third point is as only one aspect is compared it does not get a true picture of different countries person or thing for example students differ in height health talents and interest now question number 7 says kerala with low per capita income has a better human development ranking than punjab here per capita income is not a useful criteria to all and should not be used to compare states do you agree discuss so answer is it is correct to say that per capita income is not useful criteria to all and should not be used to compare states due to reasons and they are money cannot buy all the goods and services that you need to live well income by itself is not a completely adequate indicator of material goods and services that citizens are able to use further there cannot be a pollution free environment in a colony of rich people unless the whole colony or community takes preventive steps for the third point is sometimes it is better to have collective services like security for the whole locality than to have individual security for one's own house again a school may be opened for the children for the whole community than for one or two children of a rich people for the fourth is Kerala has a better human development ranking than Punjab. Fifth point is in Kerala infant mortality rate is 11 in comparison to 49 in Punjab. For the question number 8 says find out the present source of energy that are used by the people in India what could be the other possibilities 50 years from now. Answer is the present source of energy that are used by the people of India are electricity coal crude oil cow dung and solar energy and other possibilities 50 years from now could include ethanol biodiesel nuclear energy and better utilization of wind energy especially with the imminent danger of oil resource running out now question number 10 says the earth has enough resource to meet the need of all but not enough to satisfy the greed of even one person How is the statement relevant to the discussion of development? Discuss. So answer is this statement is relevant to the discussion of development since both resources and development go hand in hand. As the statement claims, our earth has enough resources that is renewable and non-renewable to satisfy everyone's need if we use them in an economic manner. For the sustainability of development The consumption and maintenance of resources is also crucial. We have to use the resources keeping our environment protected and clean so that there is a balance between the development and the use of our resources. As otherwise after the certain point of time in future the development will stagnate. Now question number 11 says list a few example of environmental degradation that you may have observed around you. Answer is first that is air pollution has increased due to emissions of smoke from factories and vehicles second point is there is an increase in water pollution due to shops and small factories in residential areas third point is there is noise pollution due to use of loud speaker at night and blowing of horns unnecessarily on the roads by different vehicles fourth people throw garbage wherever they want perhaps there is no provision for disturbance in the streets or road sites and the fifth point is sometimes people urinate in the open on the road side due to the lack of public convenience so guys here i have covered all the question of this chapter in this video i hope you like this video and if you have any query or any doubt related to any of the question discussed please put your query in the comment section below for more such ncert solutions Keep watching and do not forget to subscribe our channel Agla Sim Schools and do not forget to wear mask and take good care of your health